my name is Michaela, and welcome to the University of Bristol pros and cons. Things that I loved and things that I didn't love quite as much when I was studying abroad this last year from September of 2022 till May, late May of 2023. Um, and right there is my first disclaimer that I'm a study abroad student. So while I was like a direct enrollment exchange student, so like I was involved in all the University of Bristol courses, I'm still an international student. So my experience may not be of the typical experience. My intention is just to kind of go over things that stood out to me, things I think people should know going in, whether you're another study abroad student like me or if you're going to be attending this university for an actual degree. Even though I'm listing cons in this video, I want to make it clear how much I love Bristol and how much I miss it and how much I'd love to go back. So yes, like I did find things to criticize, but um, it's more so because I wanted to be nitpicky. I loved this school so much. Like, I loved the University of Bristol. I would go back in a heartbeat. I really want to go back to this city sometime. So, um, I think that that's kind of an obvious first pro. Bristol itself. The city is phenomenal because it's really got anything that you'd want in an ideal city. It has a really good transportation system. It's got a lot of green spaces. There's like the Clifton Downs and then one of my favorites actually, it was just a little tiny area, but there's this thing called the Birdcage Walk and I showed it in a couple of my videos, but it was like a tunnel of leaves and I just absolutely love that area. There's a lot of green space, garden space as well at the university. It's like the, the gardens something gardens. There's really good day trips nearby and in the city, like Cabot Tower and all these different museums, Red Lodge Museum, Bristol Museum. There's like some historical ships down in the harbor. You can't run out of things to do in Bristol. Um, it's got really good views. This is partially due to the steepness of the city, which it can be exhausting to walk up hills, but it's really worth it. It also, the proximity of Bristol to other cities is really great because you're a short train ride away from Cardiff and you're a cheap bus ride away from London, which is pretty convenient. Um, you can get to the south coast of England pretty easily and then also you have access to like central England and from there you can go up north. I just feel like it's a really good location. You're not too far south, not too far north that you can um, get to see a lot of the rest of the United Kingdom. So that is the first pro, which I guess was a lot of pros in one, is Bristol itself. The university has a lot of study spaces. Now, granted, they're always busy, <laughs> but it had a lot of options so that like no matter where you are on campus, you can easily find a place to study if you're in between classes. There's also a really handy website I was using all the time that lists whether classrooms are vacant or not. And um, if there's nothing going on in there, I would like just pop into a classroom and sit and eat my lunch because I preferred to have an empty classroom um, over anything else. Oh my gosh, the clubs are, uh, sorry, the, um, societies. There's a lot of them. If you want to join a lot of student organizations, Bristol has literally everything. And what's really fun is at the beginning of the school year, there's like a big um, organization fair at the Clifton Downs. And they literally have like several like circus tent kind of things. Just like these big white tents full of clubs with their poster boards up. So you can join whatever you want. They're really well managed. And I think that that's like a striking difference I've seen from other schools where a lot of the clubs, it's like just not active. A lot of the ones I was looking at at least, I mean, at the fair alone, there were so many people there attending to to represent for their club. I think that that was really exciting was just seeing the level of involvement that students have in promoting their clubs and making it accessible to other people. And they had really random clubs too. Like I wish I had listed a few of them. I was primarily in the quiz club quiz bowl, quiz society, I don't know, where we like answer trivia questions each week. And I joined debate second semester. Those are the two primary ones I did. And I, and I attended a few meetings of other clubs, but those were like the two major ones I was involved in. In the Bristol SU itself, um, the Bristol Students Union, I think that's what SU stands for. That itself was, it was a really nice building, really big building, nice pool, nice space for clubs. There was a bar in there, I think. I don't know, I never went. I think it was a bar though, which was just, it's so different from where in the States, you know, you can't just have a bar right on campus for all undergrads to attend. But then another thing about the organizations before I move on from like the Bristol SU is they have these things called give it a go events. And it's like these opportunities. If you don't even want to pay to join the club, you can go and test it out. And they have a lot of really cool experiences and outings for people to attend to see if they want to join this club. And I just thought that was really neat, kind of letting people get a taster of it. It made it really warm and welcoming, friendly, hospitable. I really appreciated the effort people put in with organizations. The accommodation is really nice because of what they provide. My room was definitely very small, but the desk was so nice. Like, a really nice wood built-in thing. Really nice comfy armchairs. Really nice comfy chairs. Like at like my high school and college and everything back home, it's always these hard seats to sit on. But like Bristol provided these spinny, nice cushioned chairs, which obviously like is kind of trivial. But I don't know. I, I spent a lot of time at my desk this last year and it actually kind of matters a lot. That's where you're gonna spend a lot of your time. Lots of storage space too. Now, if you do study abroad, the Global Opportunities Office is awesome. They are so connected and willing to help and everything. So whether you're 
you're attending Bristol to study abroad, or if you're like a University of Bristol student wanting to go abroad, that Global Opportunities Office was really accommodating and helpful whenever I needed anything. Okay, one thing that's really nice, I don't know if this is all universities or just Bristol, but week six is off um, for a lot of classes, not all of them. So like psych, I still have classes, uh, stars and planets, I think I still have classes. So maybe it's just a humanities thing, but like they have like these reading weeks throughout the semester occasionally for some departments. I don't know exactly which ones. And I just thought that was really cool. It like gives you a chance to catch up on your work, to get ahead on your work even, um, to work on your finals. And that was like a level of helping students to really cope with workload and mental stress and everything that I haven't really seen elsewhere. And I appreciated it. Now the neighborhood itself around the university is a huge pro because there are a lot of cafes and shops and restaurants and grocery stores. <laughs> the, the Sainsbury's that was like right at the base of the hill, right below the university. Whenever I went in there, it was just a complete zoo, but it's nice because they keep it well stocked and there's really good prices too. You don't have to walk far anywhere. Really anything that you need, it's all around the university. So it's not in an area where you're like, oh shoot, I need to take a bus to get to this thing or I need to walk really far to get to another place. Bristol makes an effort to have everything anonymous. Maybe it's true to all British universities. I have no idea. But like the exams and essays and stuff, they try to make them anonymous. They do make them like you have, a, you just submit it with your student number and that way it's graded off the quality of the work, which not that I think, I don't think professors like try to grade people based on who it is, but like it just gets rid of any potential inherent bias. Speaking of like professors, that was just a huge pro of Bristol is they hire amazing professors and a lot of the teaching was actually impacted and I feel bad for, for the professors, the teaching staff, because there's a lot of strikes going on at the university and they've been going on for a while. Um, so I'm gonna have to actually Google that because I don't know what's been happening with developments, but that's getting a little bit off topic. I didn't have any professors that were like aloof or, you know, didn't try to connect with the students. Everyone I had was just, I felt like they were so passionate about their topic, so enthusiastic to help students learn. And I think it really rubs off on the students themselves. In the lessons, in the seminars, I felt like people wanted to learn and that's in part due to the motivation and efforts of the staff. They were all so kind. If you're watching this because you're considering going to University of Bristol, they have really good faculty. <laughs> um, one thing I liked when you're applying for accommodation is they let you select which profile you want. So like they have different flat profiles if you are a mature student, like if you're older. Um, but then they also had more specific ones too. Like for example, I applied for quiet housing. So I was living in a flat where everyone there wants a quieter living style, which I just have never seen that level of specification with accommodation back in the States. Now this one I'm putting as a pro because I feel like it is a pro for most people. For me, I actually kind of prefer to have more assignments throughout the year, but it's more about having a lot of lectures and a lot of reading content at Bristol and less about um, turning in a lot of little busy, busy work assignments. For a lot of classes, I'd have one thing at the end of the year that's worth 100% of the grade. And while that in itself is stressful with the grade thing, it gave me a lot more time to absorb the material and to really focus on what I'm learning as opposed to like preoccupying myself with smaller assignments that may not matter in the very end. Another thing that was really cool is most of the classrooms are equipped with recording technology. At the start of every class, like if class starts at 10 a.m. and goes till 10.50, from 10 to 10.50, the classroom the classroom is being recorded the audio and video so if you're sick and can't make it you can log on to blackboard afterwards and you can re-watch the lecture um, and even if you were there present at the lecture and you watch rewatch it you can which is so helpful when you're studying um and i just thought it was very student friendly because people do have things that come up and they miss classes and i think that it was just it, it was a good way to make sure that the information is available for everyone and that being said i thought a lot more people would skip because of that feature that you can rewatch anytime but for a lot of classes not all for most classes Classes, there was still a really good turnout. Okay, and now the cons. Again, I love Bristol, so these are just like really random things that I noticed while I was there. And a lot of them probably don't matter and probably won't even matter to you. For one, the library doesn't have any books really that aren't on the course lists. I was searching for a lot of fictional books while I was there because I wanted to read some books in my free time and they just don't have them. Now here, you can request from other libraries, so it's not a problem at all. Like I could request it and it would be there in days, but like you wander through the library and it's all books that are on the reading lists. Just kind of interesting, I thought. The accommodation itself didn't have a lot of um, facilities. Like there was one music room. So if it was occupied, you'd have to either walk to the SU or you'd have to wait for them to finish. And then also there were only four washers and four dryers, which for an entire residence hall, plus like some annexes, I just also thought wasn't that much. And it was always kind of dirty in there too. The dumpster was also dirty. I'm gonna put some pictures in here. It wasn't emptied very often, like, like ever, which made it a pretty big struggle to go take out my trash because 
I had nowhere to put my trash in recycling when I went out there with it. Um, but you know, that's just like accommodation stuff. It's less the university itself. <laughs> Things were often locked when they weren't supposed to be locked. So like I'd go to do my laundry and it's locked. I'd go to practice music and the music's been blocked. I would go to study in the study center and it was like an hour after opening and it was just locked. Maybe I just had really bad luck though. Now the timetables I think could have had more freedom. You get to rank like 20 classes you might want to take, but you don't get, ad drop is complicated. You like have to reach out to people and you don't really get to choose, like out of those 20, you're given like three for a semester, six for the whole year. It's hard to really choose your classes and to know what's gonna work with your schedule because if you're choosing 20 classes, you don't know which ones you're gonna get at all. So it's kind of hard to, to work around a certain like, oh, I want Thursday evenings off to do this A, B, and C. Um, Honestly, one of the cons I would say is Blackboard because I've used Canvas and Blackboard those are the two websites I've used for educational information. You know, teachers, professors post all of the work in grades, assignments, syllabi, all of that. Use Chicago we use Canvas, Bristol uses Blackboard. And I will say Blackboard is a lot less user-friendly. It was a lot more difficult to navigate and um, glitchy. And it, you know, it's not a big deal. It worked, it was fine. But that was just a con that I, I think I was like really frustrated in the moment. So I like, typed it in my notes, like say Blackboard is a con. It's, it's just annoying. Now grades. Um, grades um, just aren't considered as urgently maybe or something as Chicago. Once a grade is in, you can't change it. Not that I think like people should be changing grades all the time, but like there's some classes where a professor will be like, hey, if anyone like wants to do some work for extra credit, you can do that at Chicago. But like here, that's just not an option. You can't even like, like if there's a mistake made in the grading, I don't even know how that works out because like grades are very final once they're in. Also, it takes a really long time for the grades to come in, weeks. So then all of a sudden you'll just like get this email that says your grades are in. It's like, oh my gosh, I had not thought about that exam in a long time on a similar topic. Um, the summer exam timetable wasn't released until April 18th, which was really inconvenient because I had to book a flight home after my final exam, so not being able to even know when my final exam was until April 18th was very inconvenient. So I kind of wish that they'd plan things a little bit sooner, so that way anyone who's flying out of Bristol will be able to book flights sooner. It, it doesn't really matter if you're driving though probably although actually if you have like an internship start date though you do need to know so, yeah i don't know why they had things until april 18th this one i'm listing as a con because it was a con for me but i want to make it very clear that i think this is definitely a pro for some people the drinking culture is big at bristol and because i I just don't do that. It meant that I might, I could cut, probably missed out on some things that I wouldn't have missed out on otherwise. So that is definitely my fault. Um, but it just ended up being a con for me. So like, this is really just a neutral thing here, but there's a big drinking culture at Bristol. So for example, like one of my classes at the end of the year, the celebration was like going to a bar um, after the final class. And like, obviously you don't have to drink if you go to a bar, but like, it's just kind of that, that drinking culture, I think. And then also like there were a lot in the debate club, there's like a lot of drunk debates and stuff. You just like have to be prepared to have a lot of social activities that kind of revolve around drinking or, you know, everyone is drinking while engaging in a certain social activity. Everyone seemed sick. This is a huge con about Bristol, actually. This is actually a PSA. For whatever reason, so many people cough like this, like into their hands. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit dramatic when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, like it's not a big deal in theory. So that was just a huge thing and everyone was always sick. Like I, that was one reason I had a hard time studying in the library is because you'd be sitting there and like all around you is just a symphony of coughs. It was kind of startling actually. And then my last con, this is the, probably the most picky of all, the weirdest of all. I would be sitting in the library and people would sit right next to me when there are like a dozen other tables that are completely empty. I don't know if this is just like a social custom or something that is different. Maybe people in the US have bigger personal bubbles or maybe it's like a University of Bristol thing that people like want to forge community. Like I like to hang out and meet people. I would just like glance up though because I'd be alone in the library and someone would just sit across from me and I'd look around and there's like 20 other tables open, which is fine. It just, I was like a little bit like, it's like if you're in a big bathroom and someone takes a stall right next to you or something. Like, I was just like, okay, <laughs> it was fine though. Like it, it means people are friendly and that's actually a pro of Bristol. Everyone was so friendly. I cannot get over how many people were really nice. Um, but that was it for pros and cons. I loved my time here. Again, a lot of these might be just specific to the UK. So I apologize to all the UK people watching this if you're, if these aren't really relevant, but I hope they're helpful. And thank you anyone who's in Bristol right now, if you're watching this, um, for hosting me to your beautiful city. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.